Hello there, and thanks for watching the next video of Palo Alto Video Training Service. In this video, we're going to uh, talk about uh, user identification, Active Directory integration a bit more. Uh, in previous video, if you remember, we talked about LDAP authentication and uh, integration created uh, LDAP profile. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, uh, specifically user identification, how uh, basically we make sure that the users will be identified on, on Palo Alto logs and uh, how we can create roles and stuff based on the uh, usernames rather than uh, <coughs> um, IP addresses and stuff. So let's get started. So the first thing that I just want to show you is basically I what I have done uh, after the previous video. I, uh, if you remember, I've had my uh, Windows 2012 server. I've had my uh, of the firewall, and I have installed a Windows XP machine, uh, which is part of the uh, uh, domain, the local domain that we have. So if I show you the uh, um, network connectivity on, on Windows XP machine. You can see it's on the inside LAN. It's on the same LAN as uh, <coughs> Windows 2012. Um, same network. And uh, I have basically uh, joined this to, to the domain. And uh, uh, and this is basically the IP address and the default gateway, same default gateway as, as the VMware domain controller, uh, but the DNS server for this machine obviously has to be uh, the domain IP address, the domain controller IP address, so it can resolve the domain and things like that. So if I go back to <coughs> the diagram, what I have done, I have uh, on this segment here, I have installed the Windows XP machine, and that's part of this domain as well, just uh, to be able to do some tests. Um, we just log into our firewall to uh, start specific user identification uh, configuration for Active Directory. Um, first thing we got to do is uh, to make sure that we have the uh, uh, requirements on um, our Active Directory before we start obviously setting up the, the, the firewall. And there are some basic uh, requirements, uh, like you, have, you need to have a username and, and with, with the right privileges and things like that on, on your Active Directory. So if you go to uh, <coughs> uh, Palo Alto website, there is a uh, pretty straightforward guide about how to configure agentless uh, user ID that you could go in there and just review, but uh, to let you know, there are uh, two more two things that you need to do on on your uh, domain. So this is our Windows server. I just uh, log into to the domain controller. <coughs> um, one thing is, um, as as I told you before, I've created an user so you obviously need to have a user uh, on your active directory and that user needs to be a member of distributed com it doesn't have to be a domain admin uh, well i have just added for myself because i was doing some tests but uh, all you need is, is distributed com users so that's uh, basically your, your user has to be part of that and the other thing that you need to know is uh, if you run MMC and add WMI control snappy over there. Um, you can see the see the WMI. And uh, if you go to the security tab, properties and security tab, see the CIM CI. Um, version 2, uh, click on security, and you can see I have added uh, pan user enable 
the account and removing able in there as well. So these privileges are, are necessary for, for, for your uh, user to be able to be used uh, as user identification. Uh, user under Palo Alto uh, firewall. So these two steps you have to do <coughs> on your domain controller. Again, if you uh, look for this article, it's pretty straightforward. So you have to do this on, on your Palo Alto, uh, sorry, on, on your Windows uh, uh, domain controller server. So the, the steps that you have to do on Palo Alto firewall, you have to go to uh, device tab and user identification. So we talked about group mapping. So we tested our uh, LLAP server here. So we could uh, um, uh, check the attributes on, on, on the server and things like that. So the, the, the server connectivity we tested here. Um, things that you have to do here is uh, on user identification tab, um, user mapping, select the edit the top right. So you see we have a WMI authentication in there. So we just type our uh, and, and passport. And we have NTLM in there as well. We could enable NTLM as well. So enable WMI and NTLM, click on OK. So uh, we've done this and now uh, we need to add our uh, Active Directory server uh, to be monitored to make sure it's got the connectivity and enable. So again, just give it a name and type the IP address. <coughs> Of our domain controller, which is one nine two one six eight point one point two. So once we've done all these, status obviously should come as okay. So we just commit the changes that we've done. Um, and we can check the status to make sure that. We got the connectivity, you see the status shows us connected, which is good. The other thing uh, we need to do is uh, go to network zones and make sure that on the inside zone we have enabled user identification as well. So that needs to be checked. Uh, be able to do the uh, user identification. I'm going to uh, create a couple of rules and stuff uh, to basically provide initial uh, connectivity on, on your Palo Alto Powerball. Uh, so we can we can do some tests. We will we will be talking more in more details about policies and routes and things like that later on. But uh, for now, we just uh, create a couple of things. To just provide uh, appropriate access. First thing we're going to do is <coughs> we make sure that we have a static route on Palo Alto firewall to the default gateway. So if we go to our virtual routes, uh, my route, so remember that we have added the uh, directly connected interfaces. We have to create a static route. We just call it default. The route or whatever we want to call it, IP address 000 slash 0, uh, which basically means everything interface, outside interface, and the IP address of the gateway is 137.1. So that's uh, basically our uh, PC. If you remember, we're just going back to Diagram. So this this is basically our default gateway 137.1. Click on OK. 
So we, we got the routing enabled. Now we have to uh, create a policy to just make sure that uh, we have uh, we are allowing people to access to do some tests by application test. So I'm just gonna create the rule which is going to allow everything for now. Not a really good thing in practice, but uh, this is what we're gonna do in lab just to do some tests for now. And uh, log it and that's it. So we have a rule which says from inside to outside for now. Allow anything and log it. Um, next thing we need to do is basically going back to the diagram. If this computer or the PC that we have here needs to access internet, obviously there has to be some level of translation on the firewall uh, to get access to the internet. So that's uh, what I'm going to do now. I'm going to create an ad rule. We will be talking about this later on, but this is just to do some tests. Call it NAT or global NAT. And the uh, source is inside, our destination is outside. And it will be translated to interface and interface 1 slash 2 IP address of the interface is 192.168.137. So that's uh, that's just to do the translation. So these couple of things that I've done is, is just to provide basic connectivity and making sure that we have uh, uh, internet access on on the PC. So we just commit changes that we've done. So once it's applied, um, we should have uh, network connectivity or internet connectivity on our uh, host server and uh, client. So we just give it a test. Sure enough, we don't have internet access for whatever reasons. So we're gonna do some more troubleshooting. Let's just test it on our uh, Windows XP. Same thing. Okay, so one thing that I forgot to mention is uh, we need to make sure that uh, uh, going back to the diagram again. We have uh, our virtual interface, NAT interface here, and we have our physical interface here. So that interface obviously needs to be shared, uh, otherwise there won't be an internet access. So this interface needs to be shared and accessible from this interface. So uh, we need to do, on our PC, we need to share that interface. I'm just going to do it now, if uh, that's not wireless. Okay, so I'm um, going to share that and uh, select that uh, VMNet 8, which is our NAT interface. Okay, just making sure the IP address is right. So we've shared this interface, we just uh, test the uh, connectivity again and sure enough we have internet access now. Tested on our uh, AC on, on, uh, on workstation which is a member of the mine and you can see that we have internet connectivity on this PC on this uh, Windows XP workstation. So now we're going back to our follow-up uh, firewall based on what we've done in the user identification. We should see usernames on, on the logs. We go to monitor tab and 
sure enough, we can see uh, on workstation, when I connect it from workstation, it can recognize the uh, uh, username that I have and where it's connecting to things like that. So, so that's, uh, that's basically the LDAP or Active Directory user identification, uh, which uh, makes uh, next generation firewalls to be able to, to do things like uh, user filtering and, and user identification and creating nice reports and things like that based on the username. So those couple of steps that you have to do um, to do the user identification with Active Directory. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll be with you on the next video. Thanks a lot.